Hi guys, hi, how's it going? How are you doing today? Hopefully today finds you well. Today I am doing my palette roulette series in which I utilize a palette in my collection that I pulled last week and I come back to you. It is the only palette I've used throughout the week. I talk to you about my experiences with said palette, tell you whether I think it's worth your money or whether it's poop. And then we pull another palette. I show you some eye looks. I do some live swatches most of the time. Today is not one of those times. I will swatch some of the shadows in this palette, but this is a 35 pan eyeshadow palette. So we won't be swatching all of those. I do not want you to be here for four hours while I'm trying to swatch this palette. With that said, we will be looking at the Morphe Sweet Oasis palette this week and I'm excited to share with you my thoughts and feelings and opinions on it. For those of you new here, hi my name is Donna. I'm so so happy to have you here today. I am a lover of all things high-end, colorful beauty and self-care. Sometimes an intermittent affordable palette falls into my plan. We all could use a generally rounded off kind of thought process when it comes to loving all things, right? Especially all things beautiful, and this is definitely a beautiful palette. I am a person who works in the beauty industry and it is something of a passion of mine. So here I am on YouTube talking about makeup all the time. I like reviewing products for you, bringing you all the educational pieces or the product knowledge that I can, that I get from my position in the beauty industry, and I hope that you're here for it. I hope that you'll want to subscribe before you go. And with that said, let's walk into this palette roulette. <laughs> we have a Morphe palette, and if you're not new here, you do know that I am not a fan of Morphe. I don't think that there's anything on the planet that Morphe has that I need in my collection. With that said, as a district leader for Ulta, I do get an awful lot of Morphe in gratis. This was not a Morphe palette that I received in gratis. I actually received this because I purchased it because I got sucked in to the Morphe color story all over the shelves in one of my stores and purchased it. I don't know why I purchased it. I am not a Morphe fan, so there's that. This is the Morphe 35S Sweet Oasis palette, and this palette comes in at 4.6 stars on the Ulta Beauty website with 140 reviews and then 4.9 stars on the Morphe website with 146 reviews. This is $26 and has 1.44 ounces of product in it, which means Every one of the 35 eyeshadow pans in this palette has 0.041 ounces of product in it. It's roughly the same size as like a ColourPop single. And it was in collab with I Love Sarah E and inspired by the AGNC and is beautiful. <laughs> and, 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 and it launched in January of 2021. So brand new year after such a horrible year that we had in 2020, they launched this beautiful palette with this beautiful color story. I mean, this packaging alone is like a selling point, right? It carries through to the back of the palette where it's just the same motif, such a beautiful, beautiful packaging. Then you open it up and it is like any other Morphe palette. It does not have the mirror. Now it can be bent all the way back on itself. It does have a really decent magnet on it for closing. It does keep closed and it does include a sheet to protect your shades. I typically will throw away those sheets, but Morphe as a standard has the shade names of their shades on that sheet. In this palette, that is not the case. The shade names are actually on the palette itself, which I appreciate because this is not the typical Morphe palette because of that. So if that was something that the creator decided needed to happen, like I approve, I approve of that. So this color story, y'all, it's pretty. It's so, so pretty. These three rows up here, though, are very pastel. And pastel is not something that I really prefer. So, you know, knowing what my makeup aesthetic is, 
I should have never picked up this palette. Knowing that I don't like anything that Morphe puts out, I should have never picked up this palette. I don't think that this palette is horrible. I don't think that any Morphe palette is horrible. I just don't think it's great. I think that they do not perform. I'm getting ahead of myself here. So this has a great balance of mattes and shimmers. It does have 16 shimmer shadows, which means it has 17, right? Mattes or somewhere along those lines. So it's almost like a 50-50 split of mattes to shimmers. I, I think that that's great. I also think that this is a wonderful palette for, you know, a variety of everyday eye looks. If you're looking for a palette that can perform that for you, if you need work appropriate eye looks, but really like color, this is going to be a great palette for that because it does give you work appropriate eye looks and pops of color. I think that the pops of color in this palette are phenomenal. They go really well. It looks very much like a sunset along the waterline in the Caribbean or the Aegean Sea. I, I think that this palette is so beautiful and that is where it ends for me. This is not super pigmented. It starts off really, really pale and you have to, you know, really spend some time building it up. I think that this is my favorite eye look <laughs> of, of the eye looks that I created because I had the least amount of trouble with this eye look, getting, getting the shadows to actually perform on my eye without having to drag out the application of it. I'm gonna put this down because it's getting kind of heavy. They take some time to build to full opacity of what you're seeing in the pan. So if you have time, to get there or don't care that that is not the color that you're necessarily going to get, then this is a great palette for you. They're not as dry and chalky as I thought they were going to be. You know, a lot of Morphe shadows period are pretty dry and chalky, but especially pastel shadows along, for the most part, any like drugstore price point is going to be very chalky. These weren't as dry and chalky as I assumed they were going to be. So point for Morphe. However, they also weren't amazing. They were still dry. They were still chalky. They just weren't as bad as I thought they were going to be. The lighter shades in this palette do exacerbate texture quite a bit. They kind of just sit on your eyelid versus becoming one with the rest of the makeup that goes on to your eye. And I didn't find that to be very attractive at all. The darker shadows are the ones that you're gonna see fallout with. Those ones, and I think that the only reason why you don't see fallout with the lighter shades is because they're just that, they're lighter shades, they're pastels, they can be easily wiped away and you, you never even notice that they were on your face in the first place. But like when you get into like the darker, the darker pinks and the, the dark greens and like this like eggplanty color, you're gonna notice that those have fallen out on your face. The shimmers didn't fall out, which I was actually pretty shocked about, but I also in the end used more, used a glitter glue with them more because I just didn't see any kind of oomph, any kind of pop, any kind of impact that I really wanted to get from the shimmers in this palette. This shimmer is on top of a glitter glue today and that is how it looks as impactful as it does as well as how I had it stay on my eyes for as long as it has without, you know, having to brush off the excess that fell onto my cheeks or having to go back in and put more on because it just wore away. The longevity of these shadows on your eyes is maybe six hours and that is with a primer. If you're trying it without a primer, you might as well forget it. It's just not going to last. I've had this eye look on my face for not very long today and already, I think I filmed, I put my makeup on, filmed one video and before coming to film this video had to repop the brown into the outer corner of my eye in order for it to be seen. It just wears away like super, super fast. And I don't have oily, oily eyelids. I have very dry skin, very dry eyelids. 
and I use a creamy base. So by all means, I am doing all the right things to have these shadows stick to my eyes and they just don't. I did try to use multiple different primers with this eyeshadow palette like I do with any other. I use uh, the Urban Decay Primer Potion. I also use the K KVD like color correcting eye stick. And I also used my cream shop or body shop, whatever it is like potted creamy eye base much like that of a MAC paint pot and it didn't look better in any way dependent on the eye primer that I was using and it didn't stay any better in any way dependent on the eyeshadow primer that I was using. The only time it stayed better is the shimmers using a glitter glue underneath the shimmers. So I would say that if you're going to use this palette or purchase this palette that you either have to, you know, purchase it with the intentions of only using it when you only need your makeup to last a few hours or purchase it with the intention that you'll be using a glitter glue every single time that you apply your makeup to your eye because this palette is not going to stay on your eye. I kind of wish I had not. <laughs> I mean, this is definitely a regret purchase for me. I, I, sh I know better. I know better. And I still have a Morphe palette in my collection that I got in gratis that I'm not even sure that I will do anything with this. I was talking to a friend of mine via the comments section. Her name is Mary. Like she has decluttered every single one of her Morphe palettes because she feels the same way I do. I, I don't know a whole lot of people that if they're being true to you, don't feel the same way I do especially those of us that are in the more high-end, you know, category of makeup. I was talking to her about how I would love to declutter mine, but I get really wrapped up in their color stories. This is how Morphe sucks us in, is they make these 35 pan eyeshadow palettes with these beautiful color stories that you're not seeing in every other makeup you know, brand that's out there. Well, the reason why you're not seeing it in every other makeup brand that's out there is because nobody else is putting out 35 pan eyeshadow palettes. You don't need 35 pans of eyeshadow. This could easily be condensed down to probably a 12 or 14 or even a 15 pan eyeshadow palette and look almost the exact same as what it looks like here in this 35 pan version. I do think it's beautiful. I do think that there are some call out shades in this, but I just don't think it's necessary. I think when it comes down to it, in my palette declutter that I have this year, I'm not sure that this will end up being a palette that I keep. I know that my daughter would love this palette. Not my 10 year old daughter, my 21 year old daughter. I know that she would love this palette. I also know um, I, I have a cousin that would love this palette. I also think that my sister would love this palette because she would use a good majority of these shadows and still have like a pop of blue if she wanted a pop of blue. I don't need this palette and I probably won't pull for it again because it just didn't, I just didn't have a good time with it. I do have some standout shadows that I would like to show you though because I do think that they are unique in their own right and to my collection specifically. This shadow here, I do have an eye look using it. It is called Do Not Disturb. And it is this beautiful like blue green that kind of like aquamarine. And I love it. It was so, so pretty, but it did not stay on my eyes, folks. It did not want to stay. And I think the eye look, that I have using this shadow, you can actually see where it starts to wear away on the outskirts of the eye where it is in combination with the two, you know, shadows that are the two matte shadows that are near it. And those shadows aren't even still on my eye. And that picture was taken minutes after I made that eye look, if I'm honest. And I, I was just super disappointed, but it is such a beautiful shadow. Um, the one that I really, really loved is this one here. And it is called um, Coastline Cruise. And it is this beautiful, like, teal, blue, gold duochrome. Oh, God. It is so 
pretty. It is gorgeous. And this one actually did perform very, very well on, on an eye look. It stayed on my eye look for a good six hours before I started noticing it just kind of fading away. And that's what they do. They just kind of go away. They just kind of disappear off your eye like they never existed on your eye, which I think is the weirdest thing. But I, I don't see that as being any different from any other Morphe shadow, in my opinion. The one I have on my lids base today, the name of it is Cabana Time, and it is this one right here. And it is just this really pretty taupey, like, pink shadow. So pretty, so understated, but yet so impactful and beautiful when especially when placed over the top of a glitter glue I just think it's really pretty and then all of the like teal mattes in here were just really gorgeous all of the like pink dark pink mattes in here as well were just really gorgeous I wish Morphe would do something about their ship formula because if they would do something about their ship formula because you know that they could, I mean, they did it with the Jaclyn Hill palette. That first one was amazing. And none of their palettes that have come out since have had such a, a great formula. Uh, if they would do something about their ship formula, like their palettes, I think would sell better. And I, I'm not, I am here working in the beauty industry telling you their palettes sell well in the first place. I think it's because of their price point. They could jack their price point up, you know, 10 more dollars, still make a good profit off of it and change their formula. They could, but they choose not to because people are buying them because of their price point. I don't know. It's a vicious circle. It's a beautiful palette. It's just not one that I think I need in my collection and it's also not one that I think you need in your collection. I think you could get all of these shadows. Honestly, I would hesitate to believe. Okay, so we're gonna, we're gonna rewind real quick. These shadows I have seen in many, many a Beauty Bay or by Beauty Bay palette and by Beauty Bay's formula, I think if you guys remember, I reviewed a, the by Beauty Bay New Romantic palette, and I said that I thought that the formulation of their shadows was better than ABH. ABH is better than Morphe. Morphe is shit. All of these shadows can be found in a by Beauty Bay palette. If you need a drugstore palette with these shades in it, buy by Beauty Bay because their their formula is amazing and you're gonna get these exact same shades in a better formula i know you can do it just do it yeah so i am not going to um swatch this whole palette there's just no reason for me to do that because number one it's 35 shades Number two, I really don't think that you would be able to see like a good majority of these shadows because they're so light in tone, even if I did swatch them. I'm going to try and find some swatches online to put in here for you so that you guys can see th what the swatches look like. Like True Tea, you don't, you don't need this in your collection. I promise you, you can find better. And you know, this is no shade to... I love Sarah E because she is an amazing influencer. She's an amazing makeup artist. And if you don't know who she is, look her up. She is amazing. And even some of the eye looks that she created with this palette are like phenomenal. Like I don't think in a billion years when practice makes perfect that I could ever do anything, anything that comes close to that. But I don't think that this palette is it. I don't think that this palette is it at all. It doesn't stain your eyes. It doesn't last long on your eyes. It doesn't have a whole bunch of fallout. It's not as dry as I thought it is, but it's still dry. None of the shadows feel grippy in the pan, which is nice. Um, the shimmers aren't overly glittery, which is also nice. And, you know, like I said, the price point is there. So if you're looking for that color story, that's a great palette for you. But if you're not, there's probably better palettes out there for you. 
Uh, with that said, I am going to go pick my next palette and I will be right back. All right, guys, the palette or palettes that I will be using next week are um, two, the two Nabla Cutie palettes that I have in my collection. So I have the Nabla Platinum and the Nabla Midnight Cutie palettes. And I thought, what a better time than to do them now. We're rolling into you know, fall and while blue isn't super fall, it's actually kind of more winter. I kind of think the, these palettes really speak well together and kind of still give us that almost summery vibe while also dancing on, on fall's doorstep. So I am super excited to use these palettes. I've never tried the Nabla formula before as far as an eyeshadow goes. I do have their skin glazing um, highlighters and I love them. So I've heard really great things about these cutie palettes as well. If you have any experience with Nabla cutie palettes, please let me know. I would be interested to hear your thoughts, but those are going to be the palettes that I come back to you next week and talk about. And I hope that sounds like something that you're interested in. I do hope that you enjoyed this video today. I know it was, it felt like super negative and like bash on Morphe. You know, I think that I just need to get in the zone when I'm in my stores and like put horse blinders on and forget that Morphe exists as I walk past it in the front of the store every single time because I just don't need anything Morphe every single time. I'm just disappointed and pissed off at myself for purchasing it and that's kind of where I feel now. So it's no, no shade to Morphe. It's actually shade to me. Like I know better. I do. So with that said, I do hope that you guys enjoyed the video and I hope that if you did, you're considering giving it a big thumbs up. It really does help our channels out here. I also hope that you liked the video or me enough that you're considering subscribing before you go. And if you do that, don't forget to hit the notification bell because it will notify you every single time I upload a video. I do upload several times a week and I would hate for you to miss anything. So there's that. I also still currently have an active giveaway going on on my channel. So I'm going to link that up in the cards for you. Make sure you go watch that video, figure out what you need to do to be entered and enter into the giveaway. I would love to have the more the merrier and get the product out of my home and into somebody else's and Fingers crossed it's you. Um, with that said, thank you guys so much for joining me today. I do hope you enjoyed the video. I hope that you and yours are well out there, that you are all safe, and that you are, you know, doing what you can to live life to the fullest in the crazy world that we're living in right now. I also hope that September is treating you all kindly, that you are also being treated kindly by 2021 and that you all are loving each other, but loving each other from afar. So until next time, bye guys.